Hello and welcome to the Discover Dayton podcast, the podcast that's all about the Gem City's past, present, and future. I'm Arch Grieve and I'm your host, and today's episode is the first of what I hope will be many weekly news roundups. For these episodes, I compile and share local news stories about Dayton so you don't have to. This week's headlines included ones about Ukraine, others about COVID, some about controversy at the Dayton City Commission, and more. I'll also share about some upcoming shows and events taking place this month here in Dayton, so stay tuned through to the end. This week in Dayton started off with a rally at Courthouse Square this Sunday, where over 100 people showed up to express their solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Participants called for the world to unite against Vladimir Putin's aggression in the country and help financially support the people of Ukraine. In related news, Governor DeWine has recently called for the halt of the sale of Russian vodka here in Ohio. So if you're wondering where that went, that's what happened to it. The move is not expected to greatly impact Russia, however, as only about 1% of vodka consumed in the U.S. is imported from Russia. Earlier this week, Governor DeWine signed Ohio House Bill 4 into law. This legislation was inspired by the case of Dakota Collins, a 10-year-old Dayton child who experienced extreme abuse at the hands of his father. According to the Dayton Daily News, the bill creates an ombudsman's office responsible for overseeing children's services and requires county children's services to follow up with people who report abuse to let them know their claims were investigated. Dakota's father is now serving a life sentence in prison. A number of Dayton citizens and two city commissioners were concerned about a new rule change that the Dayton City Commission was recently considering. Currently, if a commissioner wants legislation to be drafted up by the city's legal department, they have to get the informal support of just one other commissioner before it can move forward and be drafted. This week, the commission was set to vote on legislation that would have upped that number to three out of the five commissioners. Commissioners Turner Sloss and Fairchild suspected that it was a move meant to make it more difficult for them to have legislation be considered. Both commissioners have also questioned whether the rule would violate the state's Open Meetings Act and argue that it reduces transparency in local government. After a citizen's petition against the rule change gained more than 300 signatures and residents showed up to speak at the commission meeting, the commission dropped the measure. And now with some good news. COVID-19 hospitalizations are at a new low as Dayton area hospitalizations for COVID fell to under 100 cases for the first time in seven months. Sinclair Community College and Wright State University have recently loosened masking requirements on their respective campuses, and the city of Dayton is no longer requiring masks for city hall visitors or employees, and employees no longer need to get vaccinated or be tested regularly for COVID. In related news, city leaders here in Dayton say that restaurant traffic is increasing, a sentiment that was echoed by Wheat Penny Oven and Bar chef and co-owner Liz Valenti this week in an article by the Dayton Daily News. This is confirmed by the Ohio Restaurant Association, which found that 63% of restaurants have reported a recent increase in customers. That's it for this week's news, but there's also a lot to do this month in terms of local arts and entertainment. Here's a rundown of what's happening and where. Opening at the Dayton Playhouse early this month, Jameson Meyer will be directing August Osage County. Tickets are available at DaytonPlayhouse.org. In the middle of the month, Theater Lab Dayton will be presenting Company. Tickets are available at theaterlabdayton.org. Opening later this month, Deborah Kent will be directing The Price at the Dayton Theater Guild. Tickets are available at daytontheaterguild.org. The Dayton band Hawthorne Heights is going to be headlining the Dayton Is for Lovers show on March 10th at the Brightside Music Venue. Visit thebrightsidedayton.com for tickets. The Dayton Art Institute currently has the Van Gogh and European Landscapes exhibition taking place, as well as the show Black Heritage Through Visual Rhythms, a collaboration with the African American Visual Arts Guild, a local arts organization. The show will be up through May 22nd. The Dayton Contemporary Dance Company is performing Dancing in the Light on March 10th and 11th at the University of Dayton. Tickets are available at www.daytonlive.org. The Yellow Cab Tavern will host its first food truck rally of the year on Friday, March 11th. The rallies will take place twice per month on the first Friday and fourth Sunday of every month. Visit yellowcabfoodtrucks.com for tickets. And finally, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, and celebrations are taking place at a number of local bars and restaurants, including Flanagan's, Lucky's, and of course, the Dublin Pub. The American Czechoslovakian Club is also hosting a dance on the Sunday before St. Patrick's Day. Tickets are available at accdayton.com. 
That about does it for this week's news roundup. If you have something you think is newsworthy that you want covered in a future episode, please email the show at discoverdatenpodcast at gmail.com. We're also always looking for guests, so if you're a local historian, business owner, nonprofit executive, artist, or just someone who has something they'd like to share about Dayton, please visit www.discoverdatonpodcast.com and fill out the guest request form on our website. As an update, this podcast is now available on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and Listen Notes. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe on whatever podcast listening service you prefer, and submitting a show review or sharing an episode with a friend or on social media would be even better. Thanks for listening, everyone, and stay funky, Dayton.